Next on AM 1480 WLEA, the Newsmaker Show. Here's Ryan O'Neill. We're talking 1776 today, July 4th, 1776. And we're glad to have uh, with us uh, a writer named uh, Timothy Gordon uh, live on our uh, Newsmaker line this morning. We're going to be talking about the uh, philosophy and religion of the Founding Fathers and their influences. Uh, thank you, Tim Gordon, for joining us. Well, thanks a million. I'm, I'm happy to be here, especially on 4th of July. Well, thank you, Timothy Gordon. So, um, a lot of questions for you. What did the founders really believe in? Did they, did they get any of their ideas from people like uh, St. Thomas Aquinas? Yeah, they most certainly did. It, it depends how, how far down in the chain one is willing to look. But uh, my, the point of my book, Catholic Republic, is they've got all of their important ideas from, from Thomas Aquinas which strikes people a little bit strangely at first, given the Protestant citizenry of, of the young, the young uh, American uh, colony turned republic. Yeah, were most of them, oh, I don't know, Presbyterians and uh, Unitarians? Yeah, the, depending where you look, the, the, from the north to the south, that's right. But the ideas, the ideas of the American Republic are all turn out to be when you look at the sourcing lists and you look at um, really the, the incipient sympathies of Protestant, uh, Protestant thought and Enlightenment thought, you know, both of which went together to, to make up what we think constitutes the, the, the thought leaders of the day. They're Protestant and Enlightenment. When you look at that, it turns out all of these ideas, natural rights, subsidiarity, virtue ethics in the people, um, church-state balance, the kind of family economy, all, all those things require views of human freedom and human ethics that were simply not only unavailable to Protestants and Enlightenment thinkers, and only available to Catholics, but actually antithetical to the Protestant um, worldview. I mean, think about human liberty, for, for example. Talking to uh, Timothy Gordon, the author of uh, Catholic Republic, an interesting title. Uh, the, 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 what, what's the biggest religion um, that the founders were um, influenced by, is the question this morning. Uh, a lot of people, as uh, the author Timothy Gordon uh, said, would would be Protestantism of one type or another. But you, Timothy Gordon, seem to think that uh, there's a little more Catholicism uh, in there than uh, was originally thought. Uh, tell us, how did you stumble onto this? Oh, I shouldn't say stumble on, but you know, how did you find this out? Yeah, I had the, I had the unique situation. Um, going away from being a, a graduate student working on a, a philosophy PhD at a pontifical school in Rome. Uh, for, for biographical reasons, I, I suddenly had to, had to drop that. And then I went immediately to law school, did all, all the classes on the Constitution. And so the, you know, the, the topic on which I was about to dissertate in grad school, uh, grad school, mixed with the constitutional studies that I was doing in law school, in a in a unique way. Also, I, I took almost no classes on the bar courses or, or the, the typical course of study in law schools was, you might say, uh, nothing I was interested in. I I had gone from deep graduate studies and now I wanted to study something in law school that I was interested in. But, but the long and the short of it is I was sort of forced by life circumstances. My first daughter was born sick there in Rome to, at the time anyway, I thought, go and study something more quote-unquote practical. But, but literally each of the chapters of the book that came to me 
um, and eventuated in the Catholic Republic came as a, a unique revelation on their own. And, and the point is that, I mean, I mean, if you want to take a 30,000 foot view of this, you got, got to ask yourself, the, the Wall Street Journal called Martin Luther in 2017, you know, 500 years after the Reformation, the greatest champion of human liberty ever. Martin Luther de- debated to the death and never flip-flopped on the issue that you know, there's no such thing as human liberty, right? That, that man's will was, quote, in bondage. How, how does uh, a thinker or a, re- a representative of religion get called the greatest champion of liberty ever when they, they deny that liberty exists. Talking to uh, Timothy Gordon, the author of a book called Catholic Republic. And uh, the, the question is today, what religion uh, influenced the Declaration of Independence, which was signed on uh, July 4th, 1776? You know, a lot of... Um, a philosophical concepts come up like the right of rebellion, the right of revolution, natural law. Can you explain some of those terms, uh, uh, Timothy Gordon? Sure. When we talk about the concept of natural right, these are one of the subcategories of what, what I call just the, the benefits or the goodies of the natural law, which everyone probably remembers from middle school, high school civics, the natural law is the topic of Declaration of Independence, which was written, you know, uh, on the day, to the day, um, back in 1776. So the question is, how, how do things like life, liberty, property, and then a contingent natural right called you know, the right of rebellion, how do these kick in? How do they apply? when natural law is ultra vires, or it's, it's beyond the reach of someone with a Protestant view of the world, or, or for that matter, an, a secular Enlightenment view of the world. Uh, what I, the, the, the real insight that led to the book, if I had to name one, is the idea that the American founders, who are, are rightly characterized as sort of half Protestant thinkers, half Enlightenment thinkers. Uh, how did they wind up producing documents like the Declaration of the Constitution, which center around natural law and, and the goodies of natural law, like natural rights, when the Protestant Reformation and the Enlightenment are both rejections of Roman Catholicism precisely around the idea that they didn't like the natural law in Roman Catholicism. I mean, natural law is a Roman Catholic idea. And when, when, you, when you include Aristotle, who was a pagan thinker that the Catholic Church liked, that the Reformation and the Enlightenment didn't like. So the, the question has to be answered. Uh, people, people might recoil from, from my answer initially, but if you read the book, the reading lists of these guys are, are rather convincing um, that, that essentially it was the Protestants in the 1760s and 70s were, were secretly reading Catholics all the while that they were trying to keep Catholics out of the young republic. It's a rather stark form of plagiarism. <laughs> Talking to uh, Timothy Gordon, the author of uh, Catholic Republic. Now, from uh, I don't have a great sense of history, uh, Tim Gordon, but from what I've understood uh, from those who do, that uh, Maryland was where most of your uh, uh, Catholics uh, were in the original colonies. And uh, there's people with names like Charles uh, Carroll and Daniel Carroll of Maryland, who were the Catholic founders. Um, were, were they any influence on the other founders? Yeah, they actually were. Charles, Charles Carroll of Carrollton was the was the only one out of fifty six signers of the Declaration who was who was Catholic, and not only did did he have a, a phenomenal understanding of the natural law ideas that you would expect of him, but I, I guess the way of thinking about it that I, that proved most helpful is to say that 
among all of the the other 55 out of 56 signers of the Declaration who are not Catholic, most of them were, were Protestant or some combination of, uh, you know, the, the, the thinking which informed their support of the Declaration was a mixture of the Reformation and the Enlightenment. I, you wonder, among those 55, how, how do they work out the ideas of nature's God and nature's laws being adverted to in the Declaration? I mean, it, it, it makes sense for someone like Charles Carroll, whose, whose cousin was John Carroll, the first bishop of the United States. But the other guys who all rejected the idea of natural law, uh, natural law has uh, three prongs, all of which are rejected by Protestantism and the Enlightenment. And it's just the view of nature as a place of moral freedom, a place that's intelligible, and a place that's goal-driven. And really, if you look at, at the history of thought, the Protestant Reformation was a rejection of those ideas in Catholicism. Also, the Enlightenment, from a secular point of view, was a rejection of those same three things. So it's easiest to say that really Charles Carroll was the only one of the the founders, the signers of the Declaration, who really understood what he was signing most fully. And, and thank goodness that he did. And I'll, I'll go further on the 4th of July and say thank goodness that other founders signed it, even though it contradicted their Protestant Enlightenment philosophy. Talking to uh, Timothy Gordon here on the News Bigger Show. Going to take a quick break. We'll check the forecast after that. And when we come back, we'll talk about... Uh, I'd like to ask you, uh, Timothy Gordon, your thoughts on the current sentiments of revolution out there that we see with groups like Antifa. Stay with us. You take flooring for granted, don't you? I mean, if you think about how much wear and tear you put that floor through, why would you even think about buying a cheap floor when you need one? Buy quality flooring from Mullen Factory Direct Floor Covering in Almond. Mullins buys in bulk, and that means you save money on quality flooring. They even offer 0% interest for qualified buyers. Shop over 400,000 square feet of major name brand in-stock flooring and get it installed now at no box store weight. Mullen Factory Direct Floor Covering in Almond. Let them floor you. Come celebrate the 4th of July in Hornell for a day full of family-friendly fun. The Hornell Independence Day Parade starts at noon. Anyone wishing to enter, please line up at 11.30 a.m. at 1 Steuben Square. After the parade, gather up the family and head to an all-day interactive old-fashioned 4th of July celebration at Veterans Memorial Park where there will be a DJ with wired sound throughout. Join in on various competitions such as food eating contests, karaoke, old-fashioned races, bumper ball, and much, much more. Of course, we can't forget about the wonderful Cruise and Time car show from 1 to 4. Demonstrations from the Steuben K-9 unit and the Hornell Fire Department. There'll be plenty of craft and food vendors, and remember, the city pool will be open from 12 to 5. Of course, what would a 4th of July celebration be without a spectacular fireworks display to end your day's celebration? For more information, please visit us on our Facebook page or go to hornellhpg.com. So please, come join us in the celebration of this old-fashioned Independence Day. Checking in now with uh, meteorologist Rob Carroll. And Rob, uh, how's weather for the 4th look, especially for uh, tonight? Well, the big issue, Brian, is whether or not we end up with any isolated showers or thunderstorms late this afternoon and during the evening. Uh, the air mass over the top of us has been getting warmer and more humid. And one of the concerns during the summer months is those late-day showers and storms. That's something we're going to have to keep an eye on. Later today, they will be popping up over uh, the southern tier, and they could interfere with some town's fireworks. So that should be the big issue. But all in all, the fourth looks like a good one, Brian. We've got partial sun, a little bit of low cloudiness. There's even some patchy fog out there this morning, but it all breaks up and burns off. We turn partly sunny with a risk of a shower or storm late today. We're warm and humid, 85 to 90. Any showers or storms end during the evening. We're partly to mostly cloudy, humid overnight, lows near 70. For tomorrow, more clouds than sun, a pretty good chance for some showers and thunderstorms, 85 to 90. Any showers or storms end tomorrow night, lows down to 70 to 75. Cold front pushes through Saturday with scattered showers and storms, 80 to 85. It looks to turn cooler and less humid for the day on Sunday, Brian. Thank you, Rob. We're back with uh, Timothy Gordon, an author of uh, an interesting book called Catholic Republic. I think a lot of people uh, just think of, you know, if, if they think about this kind of thing, they would think, oh, Protestantism, uh, Protestantism or Enlightenment uh, would be the two big philosophies. But Timothy Gordon has a, a bit of a different take on it. He says, uh, 
uh, kind of quietly. Um, Catholicism was something that the uh, founders were, were well read up on. Timothy Gordon, I wanted to um, ask you, the, the revolutionary ideas that we see from modern groups like Antifa out there, who are big in the news in Portland, Oregon these days, what would a Washington or Jefferson thought about a group like Antifa? Well, a Washington or a Jefferson would have... Uh, Jefferson's probably my favorite president of all. I, I, one of his, his downfalls historically was his support of the French Revolution. Antifa's a little bit more like uh, the Jacobins of France than any any kind of bona fide natural law revolutionary. I mean, they're, they're far more like that. Um, and most world revolutions are kind of run by Jacobin types. So that, that's why what sets the American Revolution, which was committed to natural law, natural right, um, and small government, are uh, utterly apart. So they would have they would have said that indeed the existence of Jacobin types in America and, and the popular acceptance thereof probably requires uh, probably is the is the signpost that we need another kind of American revolution. I mean, it, it, it's a very stark idea that at the very time, 2019, when, when arguably, you know, we're so long overdue for another kind of July 4th, 1776, that there are other opposed groups like Antifa, like, you know, they would be counter-revolutionaries to the ideas of July 4th, 1776. They're starkly set against the ideas of natural law and natural rights. But there's a, a whole opposite kind of revolution happening. It seems unique in world history. But at any rate, they, yeah, they, they, I mean, Antifa and a Jacobin kind of uprising would not be legitimate in, any of, in the views of any of the founders. They, you know, they stand for the opposite of natural law, natural right. This is uh, typical, sanguinary, bloody, you know, anti-religious a revolution, which we've seen before, and unfortunately we saw in the clutches of the French Revolution, and we saw how badly it could go as well. Uh, Timothy Gordon, uh, the, uh, the not to get too far off on Antifa, but I did have another question about them. When you see the Antifa videos on YouTube or whatever website you go to, you see them screaming at at people in the crowds and uh, denouncing someone as being full of hate and then you know going up and pu like punching them in the back of the head or hitting them with a sharp object sometimes with the two by fours that have nails there's reports of acid being thrown in the faces uh, that doesn't seem like it's on the same page with a, a Jefferson or Washington even though they revolted against the uh, British Empire but uh, where do you where where do you see this um, going? This this whole thing of uh, Antifa and does it have anything to do with the concept of a right to a rebellion? Well, yeah, it does. Um, it, it absolutely has something to do with our our historical situation. We're we're long overdue for a refreshing of the tree of liberty in America, which, which Jefferson wrote about as president. He wrote this famous couple of lines about the, from time to time, the, the tree of liberty needed to be refreshed, uh, refreshed by the blood of patriots and tyrants. And what he said is that he hopes that we would never be more than 20 years without a good kind of rebellion, meaning, uh, he, he was talking about the Shays Rebellion in 1787, and he said distinctly, let, let the people take arms, let the people take to the streets. Whether they're perfectly right or wrong in their sentiments, in a republic, people need to take to the streets when they see their liberties being taken. Now, uh, so he's saying that really it, it's, it's, it, it's crucial to the sustaining of republics that the people are very vigilant 
and the guarding of their liberties, this represents precisely the kind of evil of Antifa that he's talking about. If anything, you know, I would say the fact that the American people watch the videos of Antifa doing what they do, and they might not like it, but they don't, they don't themselves take to the streets and themselves disband this group of terrorists or, or quash them, you know, which is what, which is what the, the founders of the original public would have done, and even the citizenry. Uh, we stand for so much, so many uh, strikes against our liberty in, in 2019 America. It includes the, the very group like Antifa, which represents homespun terrorism, it's one thing to watch it on your TV at home and say, this, this is an ill, this is a bad thing. But uh, a truly Republican-spirited people that believed in the principles of 1776, I think, would, would take to the streets and would, you know, disband these people. And, and by force, they, the original Americans would not settle for such, you know, vile self happening in the streets. It's, it's pathetic what's going on, and uh, someone needs to, some group of young Americans needs to take to the streets and, and, and like, defeat these guys on their own terms. That's the nature of a republic. It's got to come from the people. We've been talking with uh, Timothy Gordon, and he's an author of a book called Catholic Republic. A very interesting book, and the, uh, Kind of, I, I don't know if I want to say a secret, um, um, not devotion, but uh, how the founders were kind of quietly influenced by Catholicism, even though they weren't Catholic themselves, many of them. Timothy Gordon, I want to thank you uh, so much for joining us. So thanks, uh, thanks again. I, I wish everybody out there a happy Fourth of July. We need to refresh the, the Tree of Liberty, and uh, a great way you could do it is by reading my book, Catholic Republic get it on amazon.com or sophiainstitute.com thanks again for having me on thank you so much timothy gordon it's am 1480 wlea hornell